good evening viewers or good morning whatever it is where you are and those who are listening to me thank you very much you know uh it's not easy to assemble listeners you know in these kind of things but uh, i'm thankful that uh i have your attention you know in this analysis that i've been doing thank you so much and i hope you continue uh being my guests uh once again this is mazungumzo and this is your host dr gilbert kisharu gitere coming to your homes with another session of uh, this program we've been going through being in time by martin heidegger a mouthful it's kind of it's kind of hard stuff to kind of comprehend so i'm thankful those who will stand in for us to do this mental gymnastics you know it's not easy it is important to note that design stands the being of world entities from original position of present at hand this is the route of discovering entities through science at times they disappear before being deciphered you know there is the ontological you know side of discovering entities uh, and then there is the scientific side of discovering things because we are always uh, innovating things or discovering things that help us to be able to live a comfortable life and to be able to manage our difficult life on this planet and so there are two ways there is a way that human beings you know just through their own endeavors there isn't much uh, experiments being done but they discover oh you can eat a banana when it gets to be yellow uh, trying it out in the environment you know and then there is discovering like um, you know the law of flotation by archimedes or energy by uh, einstein you know or newton isaac newton wh whoever you want to pick or darwin in a, with a concept of evolution so that's what i think they're talking about here but you can digest some more and kind of know if we're in the right also we have to remember that being is taken as self evident i think that when i went through uh, the other time that you know being has always been held being being you know with a b capital b is spiritual and is a uh, nature the cosmos and the planet and the universe we enjoy is been put up by a being so it has been evident but there is the being and the dayness every dayness of our being and being alive you know that is what martin heidegger here is dealing with and uh you know martin heidegger help us to decipher the the, the entities who help design be able to exist and uh you know for that matter it is not self evident he had to go into this excruciating analysis which we have been going through and now we are in part 24 and this is why primordially people never try to analyze being and who are its entities the historizing of world historical for some reason has been generalized so much to cover many things that tend to happen daily you know for this reason for example circumstances and opportunities which are just around the corner are said to be a work of fate so in all that is happening around dozen it is deciphering its history it is driven by activities of its everydayness irrespective of their nature be they for example inauthentic 
Dazen does a very thorough scrutiny of its daily experiences so as to see which of them will be considered historical. Some of the activities are in the realm of experience, which are a subject matter, and as such are scientifically deciphered from the realm of present at hand. Irresoluteness of Dasein allow him to cross over and see things in the world of experience. This is in brackets, the essence of the self constancy and not ex existential autological realm. Dezen has connectedness of life, meaning from birth to death through many experiences. But this route which gives us experience as the link does not agree with that of primordial existential interpretation of dozens totality of his arising. Despite the experience route, creating uncertainty, but still does and through acts of repetition and fate is able to clearly explain the connectedness of life, which is the connection of birth and death ecstatically, ecstasy ecstatically through existential ontological phenomenology called out primordially. This is another way of looking at Dazen's uh, life and to decipher entities and try to bring out and conceal entities which help him to uh, exist or survive. When Dazen ponders about this connectedness of life issue, it does not bother itself with scientific ground. Rather, it ponders its reputation and fate abilities in deciphering entities who makes ex its existence possible. And most important, how they historize as a result make up the history of entities in its life. Although it seems Dazen is more in unity when seen through a scientific prism of inquiry, it shows it's being quite connected. But Dazen would rather see his being through the struggles it undergoes to exist. For example, its lostness in the they realm also the denial attitude does an exhibit which helps him to put in the back burners of his psyche the finiteness of his life. Being towards death of Dasein is a variable of care. Being towards death is says to be the authentic existence of design, mainly because when it locks itself in this mindset, it struggles all the time in making this an illusion. Design historizes in anticipatory resoluteness, a repetition of the possibilities of survival in its everydayness. This anticipation in Dazen's everydayness is said to make authentic historicality. This existence is stretched from birth to death, and it does not have to show connectedness. Self-resoluteness helps Dazen not to work against the self, Instead of thinking of the finiteness of his life, Dasein in its everydayness is busy running around for a fruitful 
existence. I had explained that a little bit, that you will never find a human being seated somewhere thinking about their finiteness. You know that they come to an end of their life in a certain time. They keep it at the back burner. This is all what we're consuming right now, what I'm going through. Viewing time as an active and dynamic, embedded in events and temporality as an ongoing purposeful effort to create one's time and keep up one's sense continuity in time. It's just the, in the same, the, the, the denial, the aspect of keeping, you know, finiteness at the back of, the, of, our, of our minds, at the subconscious level of our minds. Temporality is the ultimate meaning of being in the world and care. Temporality is actually caring. Because when you care, you take care of things. If you don't care about something, you don't uh, ma mind much about it. You don't work about perfecting the kind of uh, thing you're doing. In existence, possibilities are everything. Reputation is one of the possibilities, including fate. These possibilities in dozen hands, and he can play wonders with these possibilities. So here, the word possibilities it's not used just generally. It's saying possibilities. The possibilities you have as a human being for survival. You know, you exploit them, the possibilities. You kind of uh, try to innovate things which make your life comfortable, healthy. You discover medications or med medicine that keeps you, you know, fit. When you're sick, you take some tablets or you take some subscriptions you're given by the doctor. So you have got to discover this thing. And these are all possibilities. So a human being in his struggle for existence, it plays about with possibilities. And those possibilities are in the format of innovation, you know, understanding, experience, exploring, deciphering, and concealing, you know, and there are so many things uh, 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 to, to help human beings uh, to survive and to enjoy the short time they have in this journey on earth. Design through wonders of temporality and ecstasy, and being able to time travel to its birth, as Martin has it, or he says it in course, to what already has been before it, to what already has been before it. Time travel when you are a child, you know, in your village. You do it many, very many times, you know. Repetitively, you revisit your past. And also, you can time travel to the future. The only thing, the certainty of that future, sometimes you are not possible for sure that things going to be like that. Like you can uh, visit the future and you see yourself uh, in a flying car. That's why people dream, you know, even during the day. They do time travel. But dialectically is in play with death. It less does an content with its finiteness. Birth is more positive and brings happiness into dozen short existence. Dazen brings in the feeling of sadness found in death. At the same time, he catches up with the feeling good in birth. So you see, Dazan has ample abilities while on this earth, you know. He can revisit many situations, some which has not come to pass, some which have passed.
Resoluteness is the power in the self of facing the challenges of existence in a hostile, brutal environment. Resoluteness is an answer to anxiety. It also cushions dozens from repetitions of all manner of possibilities, positive and negative. Because when you're doing time travel, there are events you revisit that are very sorrowful. You know, that happened in your past. And when this happens, there has to be a psychological cushion that is provided by resoluteness in our psyche to survive this kind of impacts into our thinking, into cognition. So that's what they're going through here. Resoluteness is, is, is like a, a, you're driving in life, you know, and you come against these uh, events that have happened in your life, in your time travel, and it acts like a, a cushion. Resoluteness. Anticipatory resoluteness. Resoluteness. Repetition is not an experience. This is a temporality acting on all foremost possibilities. In the world of existence, resoluteness is a constant, always at, the, at play in the game of temporality, temporalizing. Now, tempo is actually stated as uncertain, uh, uncertain origin. There are things like anxiety, they have uncertain origin. You just sit it somewhere and anxiety will grab you, you know, and you feel anxious. Why you are feeling anxious? Sometimes it's not very easy for you to explain. But this, these are things we, we, are, we go through and uh, we say anxiety is, you can't explain why it pops up. And these are, these are temples of life, tempo, temporary. It's, it's what makes everything happen. Temporality, temporizing. Resoluteness is the ability to accommodate situations, negating some and allowing some. It has it also has foresight in situations before it and systematically chooses those to take action on. The steadiness of existence is affirmed rather than punctuated. And this is more in the moment of a vision, discovery of an innovation. So you can see in temporality there is innovation. Because you, you remember in the previous discussions, I went through uh, the aspect of making present, pushing the today forward, pushing the present into the future and making present actually allowing you to innovate. That is temporality in tempo and temporary temporizing and is in action right at that point. Making present is a state of temporality. And even time travel could never happen without temporality. It's a huge concept. And as you read, you read Martin Heidegger, you kind of wonder how did he discover that temporality has that such important uh, 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 play in life. It's like M and R A, you know, in medicine right now. It helps uh, the experiments like the COVID uh, vaccine. M and M N R A helps so much to fasten 
or to hasten the discovery of this message. It kind of allows uh, uh, that uncertain origin, a spiritual kind of aspect to take place for us to come up with new, new uh, drugs to help us in what is ailing us. It's a kind of a protein and it works like a catalyst, you know. Soon I'm going to give you the full name. Right now, I'm just going to go with what I'm remembering is the scientists are calling. It has the name MNRA. It's a very potent uh, uh, sequence of protein in our body. And it helps the uh, uh, chemical activities to uh, it just go right. It's, it's, it's like a wand, a magic wand in the sciences of today. And that is just, uh, I can assume it's in the realm of tempo and temporality. It's, it's the most equivalent, you know, in some ways. But I remain to be corrected. Resoluteness is the ability to accommodate. No, I think I went through that. And we say it. It's a moment of vision and it's actually discovery or innovation, moment of vision. It's, it's like a, when you discover, oh, I've been looking for this solution. Like when Darwin discovered that he has discovered another paradigm on human evolution. So that that's was the moment of vision for him. The, the, the wow, the hurrah, the eureka. Temporality of repetition is responsible for the activities that the resoluteness is responsible for. The temporality that repetition is futural in its characteristic and it is always in a state or process of having been. Connectness of life is what is taking place here. The temporality has been stretched in this incidence. This is a very interesting concept because the scientists, in if they <clears throat> digest what I'm saying, they can see it in a state of symbolism, symbols and facts. Here, I'm just using language to kind of like in a laboratory of deep experiments. This, this, these things can actually be seen in symbols and formulas, axioms, and logarithms. Because when you come with really very tacit and you're in deep nuances of experiments, sometimes uh, what we are discussing here becomes visible now to you. Inauthentic temporality, primordial in nature, for example, entities of present at hand and radiate hand, is not at play in these scenarios. This, the equivalent of the Hegelian philosophy of dialectics. Dazen always has the inauthentic resoluteness at the back of its consciousness. That's a mouthful right there, but very plain. Inauthentic <coughs> is this a contingence that haven't really been developed fully. And they're in a state of inauthentic. But when they become authentic, they become unconcealed, deciphered, and they are out there. And those entities, if they are the ones Dasein is going to use for existence, they are the ones he has been looking for. It's an innovation. When Dasein awaits, it already forgets what has just been accomplished. That's a very interesting, that's making present. Because making present, when you ha actually have a wow moment, 
and you have discovered the law of flotation. You don't just stick and dwell on it. It's a reality that a, a, a way, a stone, replaces the same amount of water when you dip it in water. And, and you, immediately you, you stop kind of uh, concentrating on that. You are already on to another thing. How does it affect me now? And other things that we uh, have happening daily in our lives. Then you start now, you are immediately into another uh, uh, problem solving. So I will repeat that. When Dazan awaits, it already forgets what has just been accomplished. The they are always hidden, not exposing themselves willingly. Dazan does not repeat the already accomplished. This it leaves to the world historical and the state of presence at hand. Interesting, eh? In temporality, the making present swallows the present and it goes into the future to be awaiting. The making present remembers when the innovation never was, when it was in the realm of the present, present at hand, unconcealed. On the other hand, the temporality of authentic historicality as the moment of vision of anticipated repetition deprives the today of it. I explain that. The, these things, that's why you call them ecstasy. It's like a dream. The world of invention and innovation is like a world, is like a dream world. And there is a, a lot of spiritual force actually playing part in a temporality. The repetition we are talking about is deep thought of the scientist is in that realm, is doing ample time travel as he tries to fit things in their right places. Rubik cube, tangle it around, you tangle it around to get everything lined up. That's those are action of repetition. You're looking for a solution in a Rubik cube and you're not looking. It's all you kind of have it in memory and everything gonna line up when you turn it to us. That's temporality. Rubik cube is the best thing to explain. Uh, and human beings are constantly in that state of Rubik cube in life. In all simple formats, solutions into daily everydayness. And that state of that action of repetition is termed they, they. And they also include the others against the individual who live together. Is it the they? Because they're all in this Rubik cube. When the existence of Dazen is inauthentic, meaning we interpret its histology from a scientific perspective. We are taken off the track by looking at the events of the past and in them, we try to interpret modern life. Now, interpretation, perception is also so much tied together with interpretation. Experience, knowledge, and language, syntax and semantics. It's a Rubik cube. 
there is a lot of interpretation. That is why Edmund Hussle in, uh, in discussing uh, phenomenology, there is a lot of uh, interpretation for you to comprehend what a language really is talking about. And to get meaning, there has to be a lot of interpretation. And the interpretation, it is helps, and that's why humanetics, which also Edmund Hussle dealt with and helped a lot Martin Heidegger to decipher the things I'm talking about because he could not marry phenomenology with what we are doing right now, existential ontological phenomenology constitution, without understanding the aspect of experience and interpretation. Perception is also interpretation. You are a creature of your environment because the things you have uh, uh, perceived over time and you have interpreted sometimes correctly, sometimes wrongly, and reacting to them sometimes wrongly and sometimes rightfully, it's all connected uh, of interpretation and perception. I am deviating a little bit, but that's just a, a, a small explanation of what we are going through here. Ontological route gives us completely different results the historicality of Dasein is the history of entities who make the existence of Dasein possible. Authentic historicality of the being of Dasein is made up of repetition of possibilities. All these activities happen when the entities who make up the existence of Dasein being possible are being sought. Let me just check how much time we spend because this is mouthful. Okay, I have gone 32 minutes. I'm gonna go just a little bit because today I've kind of put myself, just say, follow the text. Sometimes it's good to follow the text, reading from the text rather than deviating so much from it. The route utilized here is the existential ontological phenomenological one and together with the help of temporality temporalizing the possibilities the deciphering of relevant entities materializes because it's primordial now if you uh, if you have read a book by john rawls the guru of the theory of justice, the original position. That's where law starts. Law in its, in its essence starts from original position. Let's say the history of America and you read the law that governed the land in America. When they are uh, pilgrims arrived in America, they didn't have land laws. They came from England and different countries. They say the British who came to America. They brought the British law, but British law was not understood by the indigenous people, the Dakotas, the Cherokees. They didn't understand. The law, land laws, were formulated afresh because an acre of land when land was ample and the indigenous people did not know the law which were being made it could even cost 50 cents an acre or a hectare but might be that was so cheap or they were giving it land free but they too fast they had to make the law. That is the original position. Utility. Who has more need of land than the other one? 
So you say the, the uh, uh, pilgrim had more use of the land than the native or the indigenous people. So you say he can buy the land for 50. You start to formulate a philosophy of how are you going to handle this land. That's another story. I'm just explaining original position. So that one ar arose because uh, the route utilized here is the existential ontological phenomenological one. And together with the help of temporality, temporizing the possibilities, the deciphering of relevant entities materialize. Clean table, tabula rasa. That is where Martin Heidegger started. All what he's writing about Dasein and the existence and the entities who help him to survive or exist, they started from the original position, primordial. Everything even. That's, that's a, a concept, I'm just explaining it. A primordial. All the above historizing is possible due to fate. Fate, as dialectical as it might sound, is fate is also chance. Jean Jacques Monod. I think it's is meaning and necessity. No, chance and necessity. It's all aspect of fate. We are, hey, just bear with me from a scientific point of view, it seems we are creatures of chance. The Big Bang Theory. But I am not going to step on that so much. But if you listen to Darwin, Charles Darwin, and Jacques Monod, you will find that, oh, evolution had an element of chance in, and faith. That's why you see all the above historizing is possible due to fate. Dialectically doesn't try in its everydayness, tricking fate, resulting in moments of vision, in brackets, discovery made possible by resolute repetition. You can see how resolute Dasein develops it to address finiteness. One time you will become obsolete. Your life will end and the spirit will take over. That's Hegelian. When you are not there, the spirit is left. And the church calls that the Holy Spirit. So time, space, and causality are at play. Causality is that you must end. But space and time play with that. Time ticks. You age and you come to an end. And when your soul kind of departs, it becomes a spirit. So the finiteness of us is actually the dialectics and possibility of the spirit being able to survive. That also addresses spirituality. That's why Kiagad, Kiagagad, you go to rev you go to visit him. The existential interpretations of design's historicality is always being obstructed by the other inauthentic actions. This obstruction is always there because the method of 
the method to decipher entities who make up the existence of Dasein, especially in their historicality and the essential interpretation, has never been made very clear. Now, we are reaching at that time which I'm very, very particular. Okay, we have done 40 minutes. As long mental gymnastics. I think you will allow me to kind of pause it there. And we are almost reaching to where now I've even explained space and time and causality are what human being in resolute anticipatory resoluteness and fate care. They are all juggling those entities. Finiteness, death, birth and death, connectedness of life, temporality, temporizing, existential, ontological, phenomenological, constitution of Dasein. Is what he's playing about. Because in the end of this thing, is actually how Dasein approaches the end of its life. And you see time. There can never be us if there was no time, space, and causality. So until we meet again, we continue now. We're almost winding up this one. Then I'm going to go into this analyzing Richard Rorty, uh, the uh, philosophy and the mirror of nature, which he wrote in 1979. And it, it threw the world of philosophy tapsy tavi Because philosophy, according to Rorty, is not as important a 